Hong Kong's new national security law has sparked concern among activists, opposition groups and international governments who fear China's central government is further eroding freedoms enjoyed by people in the city. The legislation prohibits secession, subversion, terrorism and collusion with foreign forces that endanger national security. Everyone who lives in Hong Kong is subject to the law. There are a variety of penalties depending on the severity of the offences, ranging from a fine and community service to detention in a reformatory school or a jail term of less than three years. Serious offenders can face 10 years to life in prison. And non-permanent residents of Hong Kong could face deportation. Anyone convicted of a national security offense could be disqualified from running in local elections. Elected officials who seriously interfere, disrupt or undermine the performances of the Hong Kong or Chinese central governments will be considered to have committed a subversive act and could be removed from their posts once convicted. The law also applies to all businesses registered in Hong Kong. A company could be fined or have its business permit suspended over a national security offence. Offences range from waving an independence flag or chanting pro-independence slogans to attempts to overthrow the national government. Activities meant to pressure authorities into pursuing a political agenda could be considered terrorist acts. These include arson, damage to transport, electric power or gas facilities, interruption of electronic control systems for providing public services like water, electricity, gas, transport, telecommunications and the internet, as well as dangerous activities that seriously jeopardize public health. Damaging property used by the government could also be regarded as subversion. Hong Kong authorities will be tasked with enforcing the law. Policies for the law will be made by the newly established Local Committee for Safeguarding National Security. It will be chaired by Hong Kong's top leader, the Chief Executive. The committee will also develop a legal system and enforcement mechanisms for the city's new law. But critics are concerned about a lack of accountability because the committee will not be subject to judicial review. No institution or organization will be allowed to interfere with its work. The committee will also have a national security advisor appointed by the central government. Hong Kong's police force has set up a unit dedicated to investigating national security cases. The unit will have the power to demand that suspects surrender their travel documents, something that previously needed a court order to do. The unit can also tap phone communications with the chief executive's permission, rather than needing court approval, and it can search homes without a warrant. Overseeing the work of the police and the Hong Kong government is a new agency from the Chinese mainland. The Office for Safeguarding National Security will monitor how Hong Kong authorities enforce the new law. It will also work with local authorities to manage foreign companies, NGOs, international organizations and foreign news agencies that operate in the city. Opponents worry this could hamper the work of such organizations. Another concern is that staff from this agency will not be subject to local laws while carrying out their duties. Officials say most national security cases will be handled by Hong Kong courts, but suspects can be extradited to the mainland for trial if the case is deemed too complex. Bail will only be granted if a judge has sufficient grounds to believe that a suspect will not commit acts that endanger national security. A suspect has the right to a lawyer, but the media and the public will not be allowed to sit in on trials that involve state secrets. Chinese government officials say the national security law is needed for Hong Kong to restore order after the city was rocked by months of violent anti-government protests. 
and officials from both the central and local governments say the law will help uphold the one country, two systems principle by which Hong Kong enjoys a high degree of autonomy from mainland China. The local government will promote national security education in schools and universities, as well as in the media and on the internet. Hong Kong's chief executive has also said that only a small percentage of the population would be impacted by the new law. But so far, those assurances have done little to allay concerns about how the law will be applied and who will be affected.